We use cockroach gold equation for creatinine clearance. We explained pharmacology and PKPD of aminoglycosides. We also use population kinetics to come up with traditional empiric aminoglycoside dose and frequency. Now, the next learning objective is given the patient with a suspected gram negative infection, determine a high dose extended interval once daily empiric aminoglycoside maintenance dose based on population kinetics. In the previous objective, we looked at traditional dosing of aminoglycosides, so here this purple line shows you a classic traditional dosing of aminoglycoside. So we typically want to have a, a peak of 10. Now a peak of 10 would be good only if the MIC happens to be 1. So 10 to 1 ratio. If the MIC happens to be 2, then suddenly 10 is not good enough. You need a peak of 20 in order to get the peak to MIC ratio of 10. So 20 divided by 2 would be 10. Now this causes an issue because while the peak tells you efficacy, the trough tells you toxicity. So it doesn't matter how high you go, you gotta let it go below the trough of 2 because you don't want to cause toxicity, specifically nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. So in traditional dosing every 8 hours, you're hoping that you know the peak was not too high and it would allow time for the trough to be less than 2. Now when you look at these per, uh, purple lines, you can see that the majority of the time, the levels are actually in the toxic range. So it's only a very short period of time that the kidneys get a break. So this causes an issue for safety. Also keep in mind that aminoglycosides have post-antibiotic effect, meaning that once the level goes below the MIC, the antibiotic continues to kill for up to seven or eight hours so we can actually take advantage of that so th that led to the concept of once daily high dose extended interval dosing so basically the red line shows that if you give a very very high dose of aminoglycoside you're gonna get the very large peak and that gives you efficacy so you know when you have a very large peak you you know for sure you're gonna have your efficacy and then you, because you only do it once a day, that's going to give you 24 hours for the levels to drop and then go below the toxic range. And then because of the post-antibiotic effect, it's okay to wait until the next day to give the next dose. So not only will this increase efficacy because of the higher peak that's possible now, but also reduces toxicity. When it comes to extended interval dosing of aminoglycoside, there are different ways to do it. One way is to actually use equations to calculate dosing and you set your tau to 24 hours. There are also nomograms that are established for the use of aminoglycoside. Now, when you use a nomogram, it's important to make sure you use it in patients that the nomogram has been validated. One in particular is the Hartford nomogram. So the Hartford nomogram should be avoided in patient, uh, in pediatric patient, in patient with acute uh, renal insufficiency, or if the creatinine class is less than 20, or the patient is on dialysis and has end-stage renal disease. It should not be used for mycobacterial infections, and it should not be used in patients with altered volume of distribution, such as patients with ascites, cirrhosis, uh, pregnancy, uh, severe burns, and hemodynamic instability. And it should not be used for gram-positive synergy. So for gram-positive synergy, you should always use traditional dosing. So the way it works is that you basically initially you, you use a dose of 7 mg per kilogram for gentamicin or tobramycin, and you use almost twice as much for amication, so, so 15 mg per kilo. And then for a normal renal function, this is once a day dosing. However, if the patient has... Uh, renal insufficiency, so for example, creatinine class of 40 to 59, then you set the frequency to every 36 hours, and 20 to 39, you set the frequency to every 48 hours. And of course, creatinine clearance less than 20, uh, this uh, nomogram is not recommended. And the way that you would monitor is that you actually get the random level. Instead of a peak and a trough, you, you get a random level between 6 to 14 hours after the start of the first dose and then you adjust the dose based on that level. And here's the nomogram. So this nomogram on the left is for gentamicin and tobramycin, and the one on the right is for amikacin. So let's say uh, nine hours uh, later, you got a random level, and the level happens to be three, and it happens to be here. 
if you were using the Q24 hour, that means the, the patient is clearing. So you continue the Q24 hour dosing. Now, if for that very same patient, you nine hours later, you got the level that was uh, seven because seven falls above this line of Q24, but it's within the Q36 dosing. So nine and uh, seven goes here. Instead of continuing the dose every 24 hours, you change it to every 36 hours. The same would be true if, uh, so if you nine hours later, you got the level that's, um, let's say nine, so nine and nine, you would change the frequency to every 48 hours and so on and so forth. So that's how you would monitor. And the way this was established is that um, Nicolau and colleagues actually uh, tried this dose in their patients and they, uh, they got the peak of 20 um, because the most common MIC in their institution was two. So they wanted a peak of 20 with the MIC of two, which would give you a peak to MIC ratio of 10. And then they just uh, looked at how quickly the patients were clearing the aminoglycosides and that's how they derived these lines.